Theophrastus's Characters, History of Personality Psychology, Professor Michael Botwin, Department of Psychology, California State University, Fresno. Welcome again to Personality Psychology. This time we're going to go a long way back in looking at the history of personality psychology to the world of ancient Greece and discuss one of the premier philosophers of his time, Theoprastus. Now Theoprastus did a great many things. He was uh, really a scholar who studied just about everything from philosophy to botany to science, morality and all kinds of things. We're going to focus on his discussion of things related to personality. Now, Theoprastus was a follower of Aristotle. When Aristotle passed, Theoprastus inherited his writings and the Lyceum, which was the school that Aristotle founded. He ended up running the Lyceum for 35 years. Now, Theoprastus' major scientific contributions have to do in the area of botany and plants. He developed some of the first plant taxonomies. But, for our discussion today, we're going to talk about his book, Characters, which is actually 30 different plays or short treatises on personality types. Now you might remember Theoprastus from a previous lecture. In fact, we talked about him during our introductory comments. He has the famous quote, Why is it that while all Greece lies under the same sky, and all the Greeks are educated alike, it has befallen us to have characters so variously constituted? Sets up the study of personality in a nutshell. Why are we different? If we're born in the same place, if we experience the same things, why are we different? It's the fundamental question of personality psychology. Theoprastus goes on and uh, says this in the introduction to his book. I have been a student of human nature. I have lived 90 years and nine. I have associated too with many and diverse natures and having observed side by side with great closeness both the good and the worthless among men, I conceived I ought to write a book about practices in life of either sort. So, Theoprastus writes characters. Now, let's look at the titles of the 30 characters he wrote about. And this is a modern translation, a 2018 uh, translation and updating of the names of the 30 types. One thing I want you to really notice is these are all kind of negative traits. And uh, we can look at people either in the positive or in the negative. To me this kind of resembles uh, things we'll talk about later. Uh, and showing the uh, bad side of human nature with something called the dark triad. So I want to focus on just several of these different characters. I don't want to go through each one of them, but ones that we can still see very clearly in modern society. I'll be using uh, either uh, the latest translation from 2018 by Roman Mensch, or I have some of the older titles from an earlier edition of characters. So, the first one I want to talk about is gossip, or a busybody. We all know people who gossip. Gossip is one of the main things we do as humans, if you think about it. We're always talking about other people. Even if we're not talking about other people in our lives, we may be watching television, watching Entertainment Tonight Extra, uh, or any one of a number of shows that gossip about celebrities. 
my wife loves the Bravo Housewife show. Uh, lots of gossip there, lots of drama, but Bravo even has a show that summarizes and gossips about the shows. So we are all gossips in one way or another, and Theoprastus makes that point. Our second Theoprastic character I want to tell you about is the shameless man. Now, shameless may be defined as someone who is not concerned for their neg their reputation, uh, and they'll do things for base gain. And what that means is they'll do anything to get to what they would like in terms of the end justifying the means. Uh, there was a TV show called Shameless, starring Bill Macy. Never really have watched that show that much, but one episode I did see uh, the Bill Macy character is the most shameless of all the characters there. Strapped a baby to his back, and even though he had a house and was doing financially okay, made up a sign saying he was homeless to panhandle to raise some extra money. Pretty shameless to use your baby in that way. Our next Theoprastus character is one that you've seen in many, many stories. The miser or pernicious man. Someone who's worried about profit and loss. Charles Dickens immortalizes the miser in his Ebenezer Scrooge character. And there have been countless retellings of that story. Just to change things up a little bit, here is a very old Bill Murray movie, you can see by his dark hair, uh, called Scrooge, where you have a modern day telling of that Christmas story. Not to gross you out, but our next guy is the gross man, or slovenly man. Not hard to define grossness, we all know something's gross when we see it. And uh, we find something uh, gross, usually objectable. My poster child for the gross man is Mr. Creosote from the movie Monty Python and the Meaning of Life, where Mr. Creosote is a slovenly person who just is eating and eating and eating and inhaling food to the point that at table he simply blows up and uh, pretty gross. What better uh, representation of the stupid man or the yokel than Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels from Dumb and Dumber? And we all know people who are, oh, as I like to say, less intellectually endowed and uh, may have some trouble. Now, this term may get into some political correct stuff because it may get into people who have some kind of learning disabilities or something like that. But I think that the newer term, uh, yokel, is a better representation of that. We have the surly man. Someone who uses a few words, doesn't worry about their impact, and just usually is kind of disagreeable. Character that Clint Eastwood has often played in recent movies. Couple of more. We have the ironical man. Someone who does things and there's always an irony about it, as shown in this cartoon. If I were updating the terms here, I might not use flatterer. I'm sure that you have um, have other terms for flatterers, too. We see it as generally a uh, uh, degrading kind of behavior uh, where someone's trying to suck up to someone who is an authority figure or famous person or something like that. Uh, we may call them... Uh, with the colorful term brown noser, or to be a little more colloquial, they might be a kiss ass. And uh, generally, we don't like these people because they're usually pretty disingenuous. 
Now hopefully at this point in this little lecture on Theophrastus, I am not being a bore or dullard. Uh, and we all know people who drone on and on and on and on and uh, they don't realize they're being boring and they think that everyone else is going to pay attention to them. This guy whizzing down on a kitty car is being kind of reckless as we are seeing here. And we know some people who are reckless or are thrill seekers, uh, they do things without thinking about the consequences. In American culture and movies there's a whole series of jackass movies uh, that would probably very well demonstrate the reckless man. Finally, although this picture has all women, the chatty man or the talker. We all know people who talk and talk and talk and endlessly drone on about things. Hopefully you're not seeing this as one of those cases. Uh, but these people just seem to have to talk and go on and on. So, you can see that Theophrastus' characters not necessarily the best side of human nature. Uh, but I think it's very interesting that he identified them thousands of years ago. If you're interested in finding more out about Theoprastus's characters, I suggest you look at uh, these three things. Uh, one is an article by Marjorie Garber called The Flatterer and the Chatterer in the Paris Review. She makes some extremely good points about Theoprastus's characters and she said that Allport even has talked about the characters as one of the first discussions of the notion of the personality trait. Uh, I've got to run that one down yet. I haven't been able to find that reference, but for those of you that have followed the series, you know I'm a great fan of the work of Gordon Allport. I've also used in my first version of this presentation the characters of the Theoprasis and the full text is online from an 1870 translation. Our newest additions to this lecture come from a 2018 book I've talked about called Characters, an ancient take on bad behavior, uh, written by a Theoprastus with an introduction and annotations through the text by J. Rome and translated by P. Mensch. Really cool illustrations in this book. So, that's enough for this part of our history of personality psych. Stay being a character out there. Bye now. This has been a We Have Couches video production. Copyright 2022, Professor Michael Botwin, all rights reserved.